welcome to our lesson 2 in business process outsourcing. In this lesson, I'm going to discuss um, business process management. So um, here we will learn how are we going to manage the business processes. So ano-ano yung mga ginagawa ng mga companies for them to uh, manage properly yung mga business processes nila. And um, uh, the first thing na um, parang technique or strategy ng mga businesses when it comes to their um, in managing the business processes is um, doing or having a business process map. Okay, so um, for, uh, based on the name itself, so when we say map, okay, or business process map, so it details the steps that a business takes to complete a process such as hiring an employee or ordering and shipping a product and other business processes. Pa. So, um, business process ma map is a framework use, used to create visual representation of work processes. So, dito may makikita kayong visual representation, may drawings, may shapes, para makita mo yung proseso ng mga processes in a, or kung paano na tumatakbo yung proseso sa isang negosyo. Uh, business process maps show the who, what, when, where, and how for these steps and help to analyze the why. So, um, so business process map then shows the relationship between the steps and inputs to produce an end product or service, such as when a product goes through packaging or when an employee's leave is approved. Um, pwede naman na naka parang paragraph siya ganun. So, this is what we're going to do. Pero, Madalas, the picture says it all. When you see the picture, ito yung process, for example, sa enrollment, um, naka, yung mga pa-box-box, box, may mga arrow, ganon. First, you're, you will go to the guidance, may interview ka, ganyan. And then second thing, you have to prepare for this and for that. So, yan. so um, kapag may nakita ka na visual representation, kahit hindi ka na magbasa ng sobrang haba, may iintindihan mo na yung proseso. Um, this process of documentation is concerned with what a business does, why it does, what it does, what the standard is for success, and who is responsible, and when and where different steps will occur. Kaya meron tayong mga business process maps. So, um, this is an example of business process map. For example, um, nasa ano ka, yung burger stand, o kaya naman, so, yun, so nakiti na kayo ng burger. So, when you see this, di ba, hindi mo na kailangan, pwede naman ituro din sa'yo, or, um, you should start with the raw burgers and raw buns, ilalagay mo sa broiler, pwede naman yon. So, syempre may training ka pa rin, pero syempre, pagka nag-training ka, hindi naman siya makukuha or magigets mo na agad. Pero, halimbawa, dun sa nilulutuan mo, nakapost to, tong business process map na to. So, makikita mo pa din yung pagkakasunod-sunod ng process na pwede mong gawin. So, you, you're going to put it in the broiler, you will make buns and burgers, lalagyan mo sa steamer, tapos sandwich assembly, ayan, yung mga lettuce, condiments and tomatoes, ilalagay mo dyan, and then finished sandwiches or yung burgers, ilalagay mo sa food warmer, and then sa delivery. So, ganun siya. So, kapag ka nakita mo na ganito yung process, merong map, merong chart na ganito, so, mas madali for you and mas madali for the businesses to manage the processes that they have. So, now, let's proceed. What are the purposes of business process maps? Bakit ba kailangan pa natin ng ganito? Number one, of course, is for process standardization. So, para lahat ng employees, for example, in a certain depar department, um, standardize yung ginagawa nyo. Hindi kayo pa iba-iba ng um, ginagawa. Hindi kayo pa iba-iba. Parang isa lang yung goal nyo. Therefore, dapat standard lang yung mga ginagawa nyo. And then, this is also used for employee onboarding and training. So, especially sa HR, kapag ka tinitrain yung mga employee, syempre hindi nila yung makakabisado agad. Sabi ko nga kanina, diba? So, pag nakita nila yung mga process maps, mas madali na for them to get it, yung mga proseso na dinidiscuss ng HR. Of course, um, we need business process maps for process improvement. So, for example, um, you've come up with a process map. So, tinry nyo, tinry nyo itong mapa na to, or itong chart na ito, workflow. Tapos, um, hindi nyo na-achieve yung goal nyo. 
for that particular day. For example, kailangan nyo makagawa ng 100 na burgers, ganyan. Hindi nyo siya na-achieve. So, ibig sabihin, there is a problem with, with the process. So, um, pwede mong i-check yung map na meron kayo and then you're, pwede mo siyang i-assess what are the, where are the processes that we need to improve. So, yun. So, kaya, ma- sobrang helpful ng process maps for process improvement. Especially, um, we also need process maps for communication. Ayan, para hindi ka na tanong ng tanong or hindi na malas talk na kayo kasi alam nyo na kung ano yung proseso na dapat gawin. And for compliance. You know what? There are, uh, I have seen when we are doing the accreditation, there is a memorandum from COA, Commission on Audit, that they require us to create a flowchart. Kailangan makita nila yung process maps na meron tayo. Also, yung mga quality um, yung mga quality assurance na mga organization na yung, para ma-check nila yung quality na ginagawa natin, ng process natin. So, they need the process maps. So, kailangan natin ito for compliance then. We're done with the uh, purposes of business process maps. Madami pa, madami pang um, purpose kung bakit um, we need to have business process maps, but uh, these are some. Okay, now let's proceed to the types of business process maps. The first one is the flow chart. Ayan, ito ang isa sa siguro familiar tayong lahat kasi we usually see this and we're not just, hindi lang tayo aware, pero ito pala ay ginagamit for business process management. So flow charts are graphic illustrations of processes. It is a picture of the separate steps of a process in sequential order. It is a generic tool that can be adapted for a wide variety of purposes and can be used to describe various processes such as manufacturing processes, administrative or service process, or a project plan. So, madalas ginagamit si flowchart sa mga ganun. Ngayon, ang flowcharts may three types siya. Number one is top-down flowchart. So, from the name itself, top-down. So, ito yung mga pababang flowcharts. Usually, nakikita ko ito sa um, enrollment natin. Ayan, sa BSU. O kaya, if you want to get your TOR, yung mga documents mo, minsan sa main campus, may makikita ka ng mga nakapost na flowchart where you, yung mga process na pwede mong you know, mag-undergo ka bago mo makuha yung mga dapat mong kuhain. So, yun. So, it shows the steps of a process, clustering them together in a single flow. So, ito yung pinakasimpleng flowchart natin. Number, the second one is the deployment flowchart. Ito naman, top-down flowchart din siya, but it is expanded to include who is performing each task. Okay? So, naka-top-down siya sa from top, so kung saan ka unang step mo, Level 1, and then sa step 2, step 3, tapos naka-indicate na doon kung saan department or kung sino yung dapat mong puntahan, kung sino gumagawa ng task na yun. And number 3, the detailed flowcharts. This is the expansion of both the top-down and deployment flowcharts, showing as many details as possible. So, let's look at the following charts. And this is the top-down chart. If you're going to see this, diba, boil water, add noodles, cook for 9 minutes, strain, add sauce, enjoy. So, that is the an example of top-down flowchart. Sobrang simple lang niya. Ngayon, si deployment, from the word deploy, meron ng um, nakasulat kung sino yung responsible person. Um, eh, person 1, person 2, person 3, ganun. Okay naman, for example, step 1, for example, ha, pupunta ka sa guidance office. Tapos, ang responsible person, guidance counselor. Parang ganun. Tapos, step 2, you're going to the administration. Uh, administration office, campus secretary. Ganun siya. So, naka-indicate dito kung sino ang nagpa-perform or anong department yung nagpa-perform ng certain task. And the third one, ayan, ito naman yung medyo madetalye na, ayan, so, um, so tingnan nyo, may mga arrow-arrow, ayan, you can go directly dito, pagka natapos mo siya, parang ganun, tapos, kapag ka dito, halimbawa, yes, pupunta ka na dito, pag no, babalik ka sa step one, ganun siya, so, and then, nakalagay din kung sino yung responsible person or department for each particular task, so, si flowchart, Ayan siya, kung ano lang yung task, kung ano lang yung process, dito na dagdagan. 
na kung sino yung mag act for a specific task. Tapos sa third one, there are other details. Okay? Now, I have questions here. So, um, please uh, comment down sa sec comment section kung ano ang sagot mo for the following question. So, you can just type number one. Ganito yung sagot ko. Number two, ganito yung sagot ko. Ganun siya. Okay? The first question is, among these three types of flowcharts, which is easiest for you to do? Para sa'yo lang. Okay? Wala namang tama at walang mali. So, for you, ano yung pinakamadali na gawin mo? Number one, is it top-down? Number two, is it deployment chart? Or number three, is it the detailed flowcharts? Okay, just type it down on the comment section. Okay, I want to see your names, especially my students. If it happens that you're not my student, you can participate in this activity. I just want to see for you what is the easiest. Okay, next one. Again, among these three types of flowcharts, which do you think is the most helpful for you? Okay, for a, or the employees in a business. For example, isipin mo na lang, Nasa empleyado ka na, nagtatrabaho ka na. Tapos, um, for you, ano dun sa mga flowcharts na yon yung mas makakatulong sa'yo? Number one, top-down ba? Number two, deployment ba? Or detailed? So just write it down. Halimbawa, number one, detailed yung sinagot mo. Number two, deployment. So, yun. so just write it down. And then... And by the way, I will get another minute of your time. So, and so from these two um uh questions, the first two questions natin, okay lang ba? Can you give a brief explanation kung bakit itong particular flowchart na to ang pinakamadali for you? Second one is bakit ito sa flow um uh, itong kind ng flowchart na to ang pinaka helpful for you? So kahit sobrang ikling explanation lang, hindi naman kailangan mahaba. Okay, and the third question is, where do you usually see flowcharts? Saan mo madalas nakikita yung flowcharts? So, just comment it down. So, yun, baka, yun, para maalaman natin, kasi minsan we are just unaware na um, flowchart na pala yung tawag dito. So, yun. So, where do you usually see flowcharts? Um, the next type of the process maps are swim lane diagram. So what is a swim lane diagram? So it is also known as cross-functional maps. Detail the sub-process responsibilities in the sub-process and responsibilities in a process. So um, uh, sometimes when we do, uh, for example, sa manufacturing process, when we do certain tasks, sometimes different departments and even different organizations organizations need to work together to achieve something kung ano yung goal nyo. The pool or the swim lane consists of the function or organizations who participate and if each of these has their own swim lane. Inside each lane, there are flows, objects, and artifacts. So, for us to understand what are swim lane diagrams, so parang ganito siya. So, for example, so para siyang pool nga, so yun, kaya lang din siya tinawag na swim lane. For example, this is the start. So, mag-start, for example, sa uh, department 1. Pag natapos na isang task, papasa nila sa second department. Tapos, pagkatapos nilang mapasa yung task, babalik sa task 3. Tapos, end. One best example of swim lane diagrams is, uh, swim, swim lane diagram is, for example, sa payroll. So, ang start is, ikakompute ni payroll yung mga... Um, leave mo, inabsent mo, late ng dating ng employee sa isang department. Tapos, um, kapag na-compute na nila yan, they will now forward ito to the finance department para mailabas yung pera. Tapos, si finance, pwedeng ibalik niya ulit sa HR para si HR ang mag um, mag bigay or mag um, lagay, mag deposit sa mga accounts ng uh, employees nila, and that is the end. So, yun. So, possible na ganun, di ba? So, that is the, that is why swim lane diagrams is very, uh, diagram is very important. Next is uh, state diagrams. So, what are state diagrams? It shows the behavior of systems in the unified modeling language, UML. 
describing the states of component. We use state diagrams to illustrate the dynamic view of a system. They are especially important in modeling the behavior of an interface, class, or collab collaboration. So this is an example of a state diagram. So it's complicated na siya. For example, drafted and then proceed to check out, selected, finalized, authorized, completed, confirmed, assembled, shipped, and then received. So the purpose of visually representing a system along with its main actors, roles, artifacts, actions, or classes in order to better understand, alter, maintain, or document information about the system. Next is, um, see, state diagrams, it emphasizes the event-ordered behavior of an object, which is, which is especially useful in modeling reactive systems. Ang UML or Unified Modeling Language, madalas yung ginagamit in information technology. So, um, uh, they have uh, sa mga software. So, yun. Kasi madalas ang state diagrams, ginagawa siya sa isang may software na ginagawa or software na ginagamit para magawa siya. Next type of business process map is the data flow diagrams. It is similar to a flow chart. But um, this diagram focuses solely on the data that flows through a system. So this is an example. For example, the um, see staff one or employee one, two, three, four, and then what are the data that flows? Um, yung mga data na pinoproduce ni participant one or data na lumalabas from the system. So yun. So this is an example of data flow system or diagram. Next is the value stream mapping. So, ano naman to? It demonstrates the current state and helps to design the future state of a process, focusing on taking products and services from their beginning to their completion. It is usually used in the manufacturing processes. Like, for example, ayan. So, we will request, ganito, nakalagay din kung ilang oras yung or minutes yung na consume and then review. We are going to review for four hours. 120 hours, yeah, approve for 80 hours, and then sign off. So, yun. So, pwedeng ganito. So, yun, para nakikita mo din as a, as um employee, kung nasan na ba, yung, nasan na ba kayo into this, sa into this kind of process. Yun. So, upon discussing the following um types of business process maps, I have another question. So, pwedeng another comment na to, or gusto mo, I-edit mo na lang yung um, naunang comment mo kanina. Okay lang naman yun. Whatever is convenient for you. Okay, the next question is, among these types of business process maps, which do you think is the most helpful for you? Tingin mo, um, yung flowcharts ba yung helpful? Swim lane, state diagram, data flow diagram, or value stream mapping? Or tingin mo na helpful for the most employees in a business? Ano yung tingin mo na dapat mas gamitin ng mga business kasi mas helpful yung process map na yun to their employee. Okay. Now, let's proceed to the reasons why we map processes. Okay, bakit ba? Kanina, we discussed the purpose. So, those are some of the purposes. So, ito para additional na din. So, yun. So, um, si... Number one reason or the purpose also is it enables everyone to see the process in the same way. So, makakita nyo, hindi nyo na kailangan pumunta to that particular department. Diba? Makitingnan nyo lang yung process map. Alam nyo na or makikita nyo na yung proseso nyo ng bawat ginagawa ng mga tao within the business. Next, it decreases errors of procedure. Siyempre, dahil nga Meron na kayong sinusundan, meron na kayong guide, so medyo mamiminimize na natin yung pagkakamali. Kung meron man, mamiminimize na siya. So yun. And then, it builds understanding between areas that are cross-functional, lalo na kung mga hindi mo talaga ka-department. So yun, mas maiintindihan mo kung ano yung ginagawa nila, kung gano'n nila katagal ginagawa yun. Next is, it helps everyone to see the current state. Alam mo kung nasa na yung files na kailangan mo, alam mo kung nasa na yung product na kailangan mo. So, yun, ba, sa, lalo na sa manufacturing processes. Yun, it, it enables development of metrics, mga measurements. Um, mas makakompute nyo yung time ng, uh, makakatulong to lalo sa business kasi mas makakompute nyo yung time 
na uh, kung ilan, ilang minuto or oras na ginagawa yung particular um, task or particular product. Then, and it decreases waste by identifying gaps in excess. So, syempre, meron na kayong metrics. So, alam nyo na, like, ilang minuto sa ganitong department yung nagstay yung particular task o yung product nyo. So, ma-identify nyo na ngayon kung ano yung department na idle na pwede nyo lagyan ng ganitong trabaho or pwede nyo um, may improve nyo pa yung trabaho ng bawat isa. So, yun. So, and also, syempre, makakatulong yun kasi kung mas mapabilis yung manufacturing nyo, especially sa company, na, sa, sa factory, yun, um, mamiminimize yung cost nyo. So, yun. So, maraming reasons why we map processes. So, yun. Those are just some. After discussing the different kinds of flowcharts, yung mga reason why we map, purpose, and then um, other types pa ng mga diagrams and um, business process maps. Let us now proceed to the framework of business process mapping. So the first one is you have to identify your organization's best practices. Your organization should agree on what is mapped and the scope of each. The process should be easily understood as mapped by someone who is not close to it. So um, uh, you have to see, kailangan mong i-analyze yung organization mo. Ano ba yung kailangang i-map? sa mga processes na meron kayo. And ano yung scope ng bawat business process max? Now, um, each process should also have a series of questions posed to it that answer why it is being done and what goes into each detail of it. So, and then finally, you will apply metrics as a basis for measuring the success of each process. So, you have to provide the key performance indicators, yung mga KPIs, wherein you're going to, parang iyon yung basihan mo. Kapag na-achieve nyo to, alimbawa, nakagawa kayo ng 100 burger, burgers sa five, sa, sa limang oras, ibig sabihin, successful itong process na ginagawa nyo. So, ganun siya. So, you have to identify that. Next is, as is in process design. Specifically, define the purpose of what, of mapping the process. Ask where the process initiates and ends, saan nasisimula, saan natatapos and determine what the opportunity of fixing it could become. So, after selecting the process, determine all the steps in it as well as the inputs and the outputs, you have to establish the system, roles, and time involved. So, sino yung gagawa? Nalaman mo na yung um, umpisa, sa, sa, saan siya matatapos, sino na yung gagawa? And then, you have to select a mapping technique. You have to interview the contributors for their roles as they play in the process. Look, looking at every duty and decision point. So you have, you, para observe mo din sila. If they really can do the process in, halimbawa, 30 minutes or one hour. So yun, so for a particular or certain time na ibibigay mo. Now, these are the criteria in every process. So it should have, or it should include the persons or the department who have the responsibility for that. Objectives, bakit ba merong ganong process? Activities, ano anyway, yung mga dapat ginagawa to that particular stage or step. Inputs, outputs, ano yung napoproduce, customers, risk and controls, and KPI. Ito yung sinasabi ko kanina na parang indicator na successful itong business process na ito. So, dapat meron siya palaging ganun. Like, for example, um, nag- uh, for example, KPI, halimbawa, gumawa kayo ng KPI for BA or tapos nag-conduct kayo ng seminar. Halimbawa, ganun. So, ang KPI, you know, um, uh, there are, mas maganda kung may metrics, may measurement, may number. So, yun, kasi numbers don't lie. So, um, for example, uh, 50 na BA, financial management, ang magiging uh, certified. For example, ah, um, will receive a certificate for personality development. So, yan. So, kapag ka, um, 30 lang yung naka-receive, so, makikita natin na hindi masyadong successful itong process na ginawa nyo. So, yan. Pero, kapag ka naging 50 siya, mas mataas pa, so, yan. So, it means um, successful yung strategy, successful yung proseso na ginawa nyo. So, that is the KPI. Next one is, you have to analyze and evaluate. So, again, after 
um, identifying your best practices after choosing, selecting the process, the mga steps. Yun. After those, you have to analyze and evaluate. You have to look for pro processes that are redundant, delays, and un unnecessary steps, points of rework, uh, flows that continually pass back and forth between certain people. So you have to analyze kasi baka meron naman dyan na mga paulit-ulit lang um, pabalit-balit lang to a particular department. Bakit hindi na lang pagkapunta dun sa department na yun, tapusin na lahat. Kung kaya. Pero kung hindi naman, so yun. So you have to analyze kung paano siya mapapaikli. Yun. Kaysa pabalik-balik for so, to a particular person or department yung isang um, bagay or yung files. Yun. So, next one or the fourth one is to be in process design. So, you have to document the process emphasizing any problem area. So, using the best practices developed in step one, okay, na inanalyze mo yung organization's best practices, you have to document the differences in the existing and new processes. Especially kapag ka nag, parang nag-upgrade ka ng process mo, o kaya meron kang bagong process na ina-apply within your department. So, yun, you have, you really have to document and compare. So, yun, kapag ba yung dati bang process nyo, gaano ba karami yung nagagawa nyo? Or gaano ba nagiging effective yung trabaho? Kapag ka, hindi siya, kapag ka mas mataas yung before kesa yung ngayon, so kailangan mag-adjust, kailangan i-analyze and evaluate. Ganun siya. And next is, these are the um, tools or shapes na ginagamit in documenting, uh, documenting the process or doing a business process map. So, when you see a rectangle, so this is the process step. Ayan, yung mga um, uh, ganito, like recta rectangular siya, pero parang pa-oval yung gilid. So, yun, this is the start and the end. Database, document, page connector, decision box. We also use arrows. Ayan, so yun. So, yung mga ganito, so yun, so madalas, parang meron siyang ano, legend. Pag nakita mo na rectangle, ganito yung meaning niya. Ganun siya. So, you can put something like that. Okay? So, that is for the business process map. Again, um, we are now in the business process management. So, in the next videos, I will um, discuss another way on how businesses usually manage their business process. So, business process, process map is the first one. Okay, this is just the first one. In the next videos, I will discuss the business process models ayan, and the, some uh, business process architecture and some other business process management um, techniques na ginagawa ng mga certain businesses. Okay, I hope to see you in the next videos.